was diagnosed in second grade. Um, in kindergarten, I was always separated from the rest of the class. Um, I remember like the where it started was it was after like a test or something and we had little pencil boxes and me and another boy in my class were playing like battle robots with our pencil box. And at that moment, I was separated from the class for the entire year. I went last to everything. Like, I was like, what did I do? Like, I'm just being myself, you know? Um, first grade, you know, it was a lot of parent teacher meetings of like, hey, like she's not really doing good in this. And, you know, like I've noticed this. And then in second grade, I got a teacher who was probably a little bit more liberal. And she's like, hey, I think she needs to go get tested for autism because I would sit in the floor and kind of like rock back and forth while they were reading books and stuff. I don't know. I just, I, I didn't think anything was wrong with it. I just would sit there and I'm like, oh my God, this is enjoyable. But I had to be doing something else to focus. And I was diagnosed and the guy who diagnosed me said, you know, do you feel comfortable taking medication? I'm like, I'm like, what? six I don't know what this <laughs> means but I got put on medication and the first day that I took it I was so excited I made a hundred on a math test for the first time I was the first person to turn it in I like a whole new world had opened up for me and it was just it was crazy it was insane and then I kind of had that same kind of oh my god what have I been doing for my entire life <laughs> When I stopped taking medication after high school and then, you know, started taking it for college. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> the noises have quieted, <laughs> you know, like everything's not racing 100 miles an hour. And, um, yeah, I don't, I know for me, my biggest like thing that I'm like, oh, what is this going to look like when I get, you know, older is when I decide that I want to have kids. Because I'm not going to be able to take my medication. Then exactly, that time. yeah, for nine months. <laughs> for nine months, I'm like, okay, and I'm also thinking about pregnancy brain and things like that. And I'm like, what What? what am I going to do? <laughs> you know, my husband and I have kind of come up with a plan of, okay, this is how I'm going to help you. And this is, and it's good to have someone like that. I've never really felt, ex you know, accepted from someone before until I met my husband. And he's like... You're just different. And then and then I'm like, well, but you're also different too. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, um, you know, I have to kind of plan around, okay, I'm going to get up at six, but I shouldn't take my medicine until then. It's just kind of one of those things that come along, you know, with everything. And I don't know, I just wake up and do it. And I'm like, this is me. I'm a little weird. I, I talk a lot, but, you know... Whatever. If people don't like me, they don't like me. <laughs> they think I'm weird. They think I'm weird. Cool. But even better. <laughs> um, I graduated high school in 2013. I went straight into the military. Um, I got, I was reserved. So I was able to go to school in 2014. And I was in North Carolina at the time. So I tried to go to a community college there. I wasn't on medication and I was kind of failing my classes come my second semester. I'm like, okay, well, I'll just move to Washington. That'll fix everything because my brother lived out here. Uh, I took a really big break. I tried going this back to school in 2018 at Bellevue College. Same thing happened. And then uh, about a year later, I started going to therapy and he just kind of said, you know, you can't grow out of ADHD, right? Like that's, you have it for life. Cause I was always told, oh, you'll just, you'll grow out of it. I was diagnosed in second grade. Um, and I was thinking, oh, well, college is supposed to be hard. Like my parents didn't go to college because you know, my, my parents are good at everything. Like if college wasn't hard, they would have went to college. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. So like, come pandemic it was just kind of like the perfect storm of I'm not going to work everything's online I'll try it I'm also on medication I have been on medication for a year and my first quarter at Bellevue College I had straight A's <laughs> congratulations <laughs> yeah and I just and I really like focused on okay what do I want to do with my life and I found the food systems nutrition and health major here at UW I'm like okay well I'm gonna work at at doing that and I made straight A's all through Bellevue College 
and then I come here, this is my first quarter, <laughs> but um, yeah, 10 years later, <laughs> I'm going to be finishing my bachelor's degree, but you know, that was kind of a struggle because I didn't, I didn't realize that I didn't grow out of what I thought I would grow out of, and then um, I didn't realize that I had all these resources. I didn't know that the Disability Resource Center was a thing. I didn't know that what I had in high school with all of the extra time and stuff, I could also get in college. <laughs> and so that was just, it's like this door just opened up for me, and I was like, oh, I can do this. <laughs> What would an ideal school or work environment look like for me as a neurodivergent person? Um, definitely for me, like when I was working before I went to school, I was a supervisor and I didn't have like my own office. It was kind of like a communal table. It was awful. <laughs> it was terrible. And then my manager's like, well, we want you to be, you know, available and things like that. And <laughs> I'm like, okay, but you're you're wanting me to answer emails and you're wanting me to do this. And I would constantly have people come and ask me things because I, I was a supervisor for catering. So it's like, hey, like this client is having trouble with this. Can you come take care of this? So then it was really hard for me to put something down, step away and then pick it back up because I've even found that kind of, you know, like I said, the transition from being on campus to going into like schoolwork and stuff. It would be nice to have more quiet areas. Because even as I was sitting here in the, in the library, someone came by and like tapped on some books or something. And I'm like, please, <laughs> please don't. And I don't think that people like, I, I just, I think people in general don't realize that little things like that can just throw off your entire day your entire train of thought, and then you'll never get it back, <laughs> or it'll come back at 2 a.m. in the morning, you know? Um, so yeah, I definitely think like more quiet spaces. I love the um, professors here, that they really work with anything. You know, I kind of emailed them at the start when I didn't have any of my accommodations, and they were like, if you need anything, just reach out to me. Like, how can I make your life easier? And I think like, the college as a whole should kind of have that approach of like, how can I help you? <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't know. Just make it better. Because, you know, they're all about like diversity and inclusion. And I found a lot of things that I'm like, this is a very inclusive. Yeah. And it's like, there's so much, so much of the conversation focuses on specific kinds of diversity where it's like, other people's needs kind of just don't exist in those conversations. Yes. Yeah. And I even think um, like the whole setting up for rec um, not recommendations, accommodations and stuff that can get really because I, I, I did mine way before because I've had experience at Bellevue College. Oh, this is going to take a really long time. Like I just I just know. Well, the email that they sent me was, hey, you can send it to this email, but it was the wrong email. And then, you know, me, I'm going to forget about it. <laughs> so a month later, and it's past the deadline when you need to have it. And I'm like, hey, I emailed you. I, I have proof of this, but they still put me at the back of the line. And I'm like, hey, I have to have extra time on my tests. If like, that's going to add so much extra stress on top of that. So I don't know, I think there needs to be a better way of kind of streamlining or making sure things are really updated because for me, I always make sure that I, you know, do my research first and get everything in a line and, you know, write it in my calendar of, hey, I need to have this done by this date and everything. And, and when it gets thrown off, it's like, ah, yes, <laughs> oh my God. Yes, it's, it, 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 it. <sighs> yes. yes, if something does not go your way, it, it just, it creates a really bad experience. And I know that sometimes those things happen, but I can only imagine if that email was wrong, how many other people did that impact besides me? And I was very nice about it, but you know, it's like, oh, you submitted your thing. Yeah, but you put me at the back of the line for something that I'm only gonna get towards the end of the quarter and not at the beginning. But that's why I said, I think the professors here are really good about working with. And, you know, had I not had proof of hey, I got these accommodations at Bellevue College, like, can you do something? 
someone who's not had that, what does their experience look like? Because you know, th their, their answer was just reach out to your professors. Okay, but I also don't have you to like be my backup person for them to go to if they have a question about something. And so, yeah, I guess like just kind of helping, being more advocating for people, that would be good. That'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> I just hate the stigma around taking medication for ADHD. I hate the parents who won't give their children medication for something that I know personally is going to make them so much happier and going to help them so much because they think, oh my gosh, I don't want to put him on medication because you know it might mess with his brain chemistry. Lady, his brain it's chemistry already messed is up. already messed up. Like, <laughs> this is only going to fix it, okay? Like, I promise this is going to, to fix it. Or, like, the stigma around, we think you're abusing your medication, so we're going to take you off of it. How am I going to survive? Like, this is, a, this is something that I need to be a productive person in society. But it's because of, Oh, all the college students use it to stay awake. And oh my god, it's so them. irritating when people like they make Adderall or Ritalin seem like a recreational thing. It's like, and it's it's genuinely not going through high school and and college like a whole bunch of times. I know two people in my entire life who abused Adderall, and doctors don't just prescribe it to anyone. They you know. I had to go through, even though I had a prior diagnosis, I had to get re-diagnosed when I was here in Washington, and it took six months for me to get another diagnosis. And we went through things from all the way back to before I got my first diagnosis to like, you know, hey, what do you do differently now as an adult? Like, or do you still do this? And it's just this huge process for people to stigmatize taking medication. It drives me crazy. <laughs>